Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to sketch a scatter plot, um, sketch the best fit line, and then try to determine the equation for the best fit line. That's best going to represent our information. So what we have here is we have a table of values. And I created some grids here, um, or some graphs. And basically what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is sketch our points. Now, it's our, you know, sketch our plotted our plotter points. Now, before we get to that, we got to be able to determine our scale. And that's going to be different um, depending on you know, how we want to fit our data. So you can see here on my x's, they go start at 3 and they go up to you know, 18. So on the bottom, I'm going to go by 3. So I'm going to do 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, and 21. Again, ladies and gentlemen, you, know, you can go by 5s. You can go by 1s if you want to. Just make sure that you are consistent. Um, on this side, though, I'm going to re raise up a little bit higher. So I'm actually going to change the scale. Instead of going by threes, I'm going to go by 10. So I'd have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 120. Okay. Now, obviously, if I had grid paper, this would make this a lot easier. But I'm going to try to do my best without some grid paper. Okay. So now I'm basically just going to kind of sketch the points as best I can. I know, again, I don't have grid paper. So you know, and these values aren't exactly on my, um, would be on my grid lines anyway. So I'm just going to kind of sketch them the best I can. 316 is probably going to be somewhere right around there. Then I have 745. So I go probably 745, um, 1080, or 10 would be 82. And then 15, 102. And then, one, and then 18, 116. 18, and then 116. OK, so basically, when creating a trend line, basically, the best thing that you're going to want to do is kind of create two, kind of determine two points that are going to really best represent your trend line, or that maybe when you create your trend line, Try to create your trend line um, when you're trying to write the equation of a trend line. Try to create your trend line between at least two points. So if I'm kind of looking at this and I'm trying to see, you know, what would be the best two points I could create my trend line? I'm thinking if I can write a line between these two, if I can create a trend line between these two points, I could probably use these two to best represent my data. So I'm going to create a, going to connect these two points. And I'm going to say, all right, that's going to be my trend line, which, you know, not too bad. It's, you know, fairly, fairly close there. OK, so remember, now, if I want to write the equation, so I, I created the scatter plot. Um, I found, created the scatter plot. I sketched the trend line. Now what I want to do is create the equation. Well, how do you create an equation just from a scatter plot? Well, we do know the values of these two points. This one is 7, 45. And this one is going to be 18, 116. So remember, we can, we can create a line from given two points. Basically, the main important thing we want to do is determine the slope. So I'll say this is, I'll call this one x1, this one y1. I'll call this x2, and this one y2. So remember, the slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So when creating the slope, I'll do 116 minus 45 divided by 18 minus 7. Um, it's kind of early in the morning. I don't even want to do my math. 45, I should do this. That would be 15, 30. So that would be six or 71, 15. No, it would be 86. Let's just see, minus 45, 71. I was right, 71. I don't know, my brain's all thing. So therefore, I have 71 and 18 minus um, 7 is going to be 11. So I have 71 over 11. Now, 71 or 11 obviously does not divide into 71. 50, 30, 45. Ah, uh, that's 15, 30, yeah, obviously. OK, so uh, 71 does not, or 11 does not evenly divide into 71. You could use the decimal approximation. However, I really do not like using decimals. Yeah, that's going to be a repeating decimal. So we're definitely not going to use that as a slope. So this is going to represent our slope of our line. Now, to find the remainder of our line, we can use point slope form or we can use slope intercept form. Uh, since I have a fraction, I'm probably going to, I like to use slope intercept form rather than point slope form. 
So I'm just going to say I need to write an equation in the form y equals mx plus b. I already know what the slope is, y equals 71 over 11. But I do not know what b is. So what I can do is take one of my points here, one of these points, and plug them in for x and y. So I'm going to choose my first point. So I'll say 45 equals 71 over 11 times 7 plus b. Okay. Now I can multiply this here. So I can do 71 times 7 equals 497. So I have 45 equals 497 over 11 plus b. Then basically to go ahead and solve for b, I'm going to subtract 497 divided by 11 on both sides. Now, when subtracting, I have 45 minus 497 over 11 equals b. Now, this would be really nice. You can also plug this information into a calculator and get the exact same values. But assuming you don't have a calculator, this is what you're going to want to do. Now, to get this to be the same denominator, I've got to multiply by, put that over 1, multiply by 11 over 11. So therefore, I have 45 times 11, which is 495. So I have 495 over 11 minus 497 over 11 equals b. And actually, that's going to be negative. Cool. So when I subtract those, that actually gives me a negative 2 elevenths equals b. So now I have found my y-intercept, and I found my slope. So therefore, the equation of my line, this best fit line, is going to be y equals 71 elevenths x minus 2 elevenths. Okay? So actually, my best fit line is not going to intersect right there. It'd probably be the, I mean, that's the least, I mean, obviously, I don't have the very great graph um, going on here. But that's the least represented. So therefore, if I wanted to estimate, what's nice about having the equation, because yes, the best fit line helps you with the trend on the graph. But what if I wanted to say, well, what about when x is 300? Well, then, if I want to find y, I can plug 300 in for x and solve for y. That's why no, uh, being able to determine what the best fit line can be so important. All right, so let's go and get into the next one. Um, again, to go ahead, first thing I need to do is create a scaling. So in this case, to create my scale here, these are going by um, up from you know, 12 to 64. So I'm going to go by 5. So let's do 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55, 60, 65, 70. And then for my y's, you can see it starts at 100 and goes all the way down to 9. So I'm going to go by 10s. So I'll do 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. OK, so now, just like we did before, um, let's go ahead and plot the points. So I have 12, 100. So 12 is be like here, up 100. Then I have 25, 75. That's nice. And this is really difficult without any, uh, without any grid lines, so I'm trying to do my best. The next one is 36, 52. Then I have 36, 52. Then I have 50, 26. And then I have 64, 9. OK? So therefore, again, ladies and gentlemen, um, you know, we want to be able to create this trend line. You can see these are pretty closely related, but they're not in an exact line. All right? But they're pretty close. So again, if I was going to look into creating a trend line here, I probably would say that I can probably connect here. I'd probably say that connecting the first and the last point is probably going to produce the best trend line for me. So let's go ahead and determine what exactly those points are. So my first point, again, was 12, 100. And my last point was 9, 64. So just like I did before, let's go ahead and find what the slope is. So I'll do this one is x1, y1. This one would be x2, y2. So I'll do m equals um, 100 minus 64 over 12 minus 9. 
So in this case, uh, let's see, 86, so that'd be 26. <sighs> 26 over 3. Unfortunately, 3 does not go into 26, so I'm going to have another fraction. Um, the other thing you can also do, though, is now plug in a point, and I'll use, in this case, I'll use slope inner, I'll use point slope form. So I remember point slope form is basically um, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So if you had two points, you could plug them both in to find m. Or you can just say, all right, which one represents y1 and x1? And then I'm going to use y and x are going to be represented in my equation. So I said this was x1, this is uh, y1. So I'll do y minus 100 equals m, which is 26 over 3, times um, x minus 12. Okay. And again, ladies and gentlemen, just remember um, just remember when you're, you know, this is just an estimate. You might have chosen two points when you graphed it for your best fit line, but this is just going to be my representation. So now what we need to do is apply distributive property here. When doing that, I obtain y minus 100 equals 26 over 3x. Then I need to do 26, so that's going to be a minus um, uh, 26 times 12, because that was a negative 12, divided by 3. Now, I can basically simplify this. 12 divided by 3, that goes to 4. 4 times 12 is going to be 52. That's going to be 104. So I basically have y minus 100 equals 26 over 3x, uh, 52. Wait a minute, what's wrong here? That's 12, 100. minus 12 minus 100 m times x. Oh, what am I doing? I, my slope should be negative. x1, y1, x2. All right, let's, what did I do? I called this y2, x1. So I did y2 or x x2. Ah, see what I did? Uh, simple mistake, simple mistake. OK, I should have labeled them. I don't know why I didn't. So you got to be very, very careful here. You can see my mistake. What I did is I plugged these in. I said this was x2, y2. This was x1, y1. Well, OK, that's perfectly fine when you plug them in. But then when I plug them into here, I flip flop them, right? So you got to make sure that you label them and you use that as your two values. So let's go ahead and subtract. Let's go ahead and change this then. It's going to be, it's still going to provide you the same equation. You just got to be consistent. So this would be minus 64, and this is going to be minus 9. OK. Um, x 100 minus 64, 12 minus 9. But that should still give you, all right. I know what I did. These are flopped. I was wondering, I'm like, why am I not getting a negative? And I apologize for making this video much longer than it needs to be. But <laughs> you can still do 100 minus 64, or it should be 100 minus 9. Oh my god. Sorry about this. I'm making this thing so much worse than it needs to be. And it, and it all was because I didn't be careful. So let's label these. I'm actually going to label this um, uh, x2, y2. And I'll label this x1, y2. Just make sure you have your x and your y's correlated together. OK. Now, now we get into it. So if I was going to do y2, so it would be 9 minus 100 divided by x minus x2. So that's 64 minus 12. OK, 9 minus 100 is going to be a negative 81. 64 minus 12 is going to be a positive uh, 52. OK, so now my fraction is negative 81 divided by 52. Crazy fraction, but it's negative, which I, you see there's a negative correlation. So your slope has to be negative. Again, let's go back through using slope intercept form. So I'll do y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. 
So again, we're going to plug in x1 and uh, x1 and y1. So I do y minus 9 equals my m, which is a negative 81 over 52, times x minus x1, which is 64. OK, so now I can apply distributive property here. So what I obtain is y minus 9 equals negative 81 over 52x. And then minus, I got to multiply these out. So I have negative 81 over 52 time, or times a negative 64. So I have, so it's minus a negative. So it's going to be 81 times 64 is 5,184. So it's going to be a positive 5,184 all over 52. Then the last thing I need to do is add a 9. So now I need to add a 9 to that fraction. So basically what I have here is 5,184 over 52 plus 9. Well, I put 9 over 1, and then I multiply by 52 on the top and bottom. Okay. So now I need to do 9 times 52, and then add that to 5,184. And I get 5,652. So my final equation is y equals negative 81 over 52x plus 5,652 divided by 52. Now, if we were to divide 5,652 divided by 52, that's going to be your y-intercept. And using this trend line, you could see that y-intercept should probably be way over 100. So let's go and do that. Let's double check our work. Divided by 52. And I get 108. So maybe my calculation's not, uh, or maybe my best fit line's not the best. But uh, it should, at least that does follow, um, at least part of my trend line. So maybe my, my graphs might not be the best. Um, but that does look like that would, um, that, would that would fit within my model. It's at least over 100. So I know that's going to work. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you sketch a scatter plot, create the best fit line, and then write the equation of your best fit line. Thanks.